Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to look at how to animate elements in your game uh, with Unity using the Bolt Visual Scripting System and Choreographer. Uh, in this tutorial video, uh, we will be using not only Bolt and Choreographer assets, but we're going to be using the uh, PolyPerfect Low Poly Ultimate Pack uh, of, of just kind of assets. Uh, and we're going to be using a track of music from the Alibi Music uh, music library. Okay, uh, let's dive in. Let's start by looking at what the target that we're going to try to build today is going to look like. That's it. Uh, all of those little things were kind of dancing along with the music. We had two different types of pumpkin timings for the animation, and we had a little bit of uh, the kind of chorus uh, sunflowers doing their own little dance. Um, so we'll we'll take a look at how to do that. Um, as a quick preview, uh, the flow graphs required to to do that that we used to do this were very simple. Um, this is the one for the sunflowers. It has, and we'll, we'll cover this in detail later, uh, but it gets an event. It grabs a, a value out of some information uh, from choreographer specifically. Uh, and then it just sets the scale. On the other graph, uh, for we use it to trigger animations. Again, we're using events from choreographer. In this case, we are grabbing animation, the animation component, and we're saying, telling it to stop and play an animation. And with that, let's take a look at what we need to do to the scene in order to set things up uh, to create that experience uh, that we had just uh, shown you. So in order to get game elements to animate along with music, uh, while using visual scripting, we're gonna be using the two tools, Bolt uh, for visual scripting, of course, uh, and the choreographer uh, asset on the asset store. The Bolt will allow us to do visual scripting and Choreographer is what we're going to use to provide Unity with the information about when to trigger animations to start and in another circumstance, how to animate in a sense and how to scale uh, the certain game objects in the scene. Um, so in order to use Choreographer in this way, we're gonna do a little bit of scene setup uh, and we need to effectively tell the scene, hey, Here's a music player, use this music. So to do that, we'll hop right over here into the hierarchy. We're going to create a new empty game object. We're gonna call it uh, music player. Uh, we're gonna go over here and add two components, specifically choreographer components. The first one is called choreographer, and that is um, kind of a beating heart of choreographer system. Um, it is the system that uh, that choreographer talks through in order to send out these musical signals. Uh, and in order to play the music, we're going to be pulling in choreographer, music players, the simple music player. Now that we have this added, we're basically set up on the choreographer side of things. Um, the one thing we don't have yet is choreography data. We need something to say, okay, here's the music we're going to be using. And here is uh, we're going to, here's the music we're going to be using. And here are all the locations that we want, you know, animations to happen or certain things to happen throughout the playback of the music. So <clears throat> what we'll do is we're going to open up our choreography editor, which I already have open, but you can find it, uh, in here, choreography editor, um, window choreography editor. Uh, and we actually already have choreography made. There is another video uh, where we are gonna go through this basic setup of, of everything. Take a look at it, it's in the description. It's also available possibly on, on an overlay. Anyway, um, we have taken those assets and brought them into this project just to, to keep things fast and simple, but I'll still show you kind of the idea. 
Uh, we'll pick this one, the Skeleton March Choreo, because that's the one that we created before. Uh, all of these red lines are what are known as bones events. These are, well, they're choreography events, but they're in the bones track. So there is an event ID known as bones. And if you're listening for bones, you'll get a signal for every one of these red lines in, this, in, the, in the music. As the music plays back, you'll see events being triggered whenever that happens. Um, the same thing happens with these bonks. They're just in a different location. And I can create these, by the way, by just clicking draw and clicking in the scene. I can turn off snap to beat and I can do this. I can also undo everything that I've just done. If I'm in select mode, I can double click and it'll create a one-off for me. There's very basic stuff uh, on how to do this stuff. Uh, you know, the other video that we that I, I mentioned before has much more detail. Um, the one other uh, track we have prepared here is called Organ, uh, and it has this kind of sweeping curve that is actually made up of several curves. Um, and what it allows us to do is specify, you know, uh, effectively an animation within the music so that anything listening for the organ event will receive data that will allow it to say, okay, where I am in the music I have a value associated with this curve. Now these curves go from one to 1 1.5, which we're going to be using to scale uh, game objects. Uh, so that means that it'll go from, from scale one to 1 1.5 and then back down to one uh, with these other curves that kind of go back down. Uh, at any rate, that's what happens with the um, the, these curves, these are called curve payloads for span events. You can create a span event by clicking on the span button, clicking on draw, and then literally just clicking and dragging to create it. And I can snap those to beat if I want, but right now I don't. So I will select that and delete it. Great. Uh, that is the basic of choreographer and the choreography data. I should mention uh, that the music uh, in this scene was taken from the Alibi Music Library, um, uh, and uh, it provided us with the tempo that we use to get everything, and, you know, it's a great library. Uh, okay, great. So this is the music that we're going to do, and back in our scene, we will add that to the music player by selecting this little button here, and we're going to select the Skeleton March Choreo. So now when this when the scene is played, we will hear the music being played through uh, through that. Okay, so we have some music playing. What we do not have, uh, <laughs> what we do not have yet is any of the visual scripting. Um, and there is one more piece that we need to add for choreographer to work with Bolt. Uh, and that is one little glue script that we'll write. Um, it's very short and I'll show that to you right now. Um, we've called it choreographer to bolt. It is a behavior, so it's a component, standard Unity component. Very, very simple. It has one field called event ID, which is, if you recall, in the choreography track that we have loaded up here, this is the event ID, organ. Uh, and this event ID um, attribute will allow us to get some fancy stuff in the inspector, uh, which you'll see later. Uh, at any event, there's two functions in here, two methods. The first one is the start, where we tell choreographer, hey, we're going to be registering for events, um, specifically with time, which gives us a bit of extra metadata with the callback from whenever choreographer triggers an event. Uh, the it, it will send a whole bunch of information. It'll send the event with containing whatever payload you have. If that's the curve event, it sends the curve. Uh, and it'll send what's the, the current music time, what was the delta used in time between the last frame and this frame. Uh, and it sends some extra metadata that's uh, used in very advanced circumstances we're not going to cover right now. Um, <clears throat> at any event, we have, we register with choreographer and we say, hey, when this event ID is, is triggered, call this function. And in that function, which is a, a trigger bolt event, um, what we do is we just forward that message to the a, a configured bolt um, macro uh, and or a flow graph effectively. Uh, and what we're doing is we're telling it, hey, we're going to target 
you know, graphs on this game object um, for which this behavior is installed. We're going to tell it to trigger the choreographer custom event. Uh, and then we're going to send all the data. We just forward it along through the data so that the graphs have full access to what's going on. Great. That's it. Very simple, very simple script. Uh, so now with that in our project, which we have put here in these scripts, we have this choreographer to bolt script. Okay, so there's one more little piece of kind of setup that we need to have. We need an animation. Uh, and in our project, we're, we've also pulled that over from the same project we have in this other video. Uh, but I'll show you the animation anyway. Um, we have this animation clip right here. Uh, and I can show you what it looks like. I'll open up the animation window. This is a legacy animation uh, because we're doing simple animation stuff right now. Uh, so we'll open up this animation window. It's this pumpkin grow thing, uh, uh, animation clip. And it is it's a very simple animation. It goes from 1.5 to one. Uh, and that's it. It's just the smooth curve uh, that goes down. And it does that for all X, Y, and Z together. So now that we have this event, uh, we need to actually add it to the objects in, in the, um, the scene that we want to animate. To do that, the first thing we'll do is we'll pick on one of these, these pumpkins down here, uh, and we will open up its prefab, and we're going to add the animator component. Uh, sorry, the animation component. Uh, and we're going to set the animation clip to be our pumpkin grow. And we are going to be, yep, that's fine. We're going to turn off play automatically. We don't want that. Uh, and that's it. We're going to do file save project because this is a an asset because it is the prefab. Uh, and then we're going to do the same thing to this scene pumpkin here. We're going to add a component, add the animation, set it to pumpkin grow because it's the same thing. Uh, and we're going to turn off play automatically. Great. So now these these are prepared. All the pumpkins in the scene are now prepared to have that kind of jump to one and a half size scale and scale back down. So now that we have the animation set up and the music set up in the scene, we need to actually begin using Bolt to tell it how to uh, respond to the choreography events in the music. Uh, we have we'll start with the animated pumpkins because uh, there's the two different different animations that we want to do the pumpkins and the sunflowers we'll start with the the pumpkins uh, for the pumpkins we're going to create a new macro I'm gonna first go up here at top level I'm gonna create a folder and I'm gonna call it macros uh, and then well I'm not gonna put it in the choreographer folder I'm gonna create it up here at the top actual top level uh, and then inside of the macros folder I will create a bolt flow macro. I'm going to call it uh, musically trigger anims. And I am going to open open it by editing the graph. I have this new graph space here. Uh, and we're basically ready to go. So in in this flow graph, we're basically going to say, okay, get the custom event, we're going to um, use that when we get the custom event, we're going to say, Hey, let's get that animation component off of the game object. Uh, and then we're going to tell that animation component to stop any animation that's currently playing and play the one that we have specified. The reason we do a stop and then play is because that will allow us to, if we want to do two very quick in successions, you know, uh, animations, we can stop one, even though it's partway through and begin it again at the beginning. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is add uh, the custom event. We're going to right click, go to events and go to custom events. And that's added this in here. We know that there are four arguments. And again, the arguments are these four parameters in that function. They are the choreography events. That's arg zero sample time, sample Delta and Delta slice is zero, one, two, three. Um, we're going to call this event choreographer. That's this name here. In fact, I'm going to just copy it and then paste it into this space here. This is now set up. If, if when we have this configured on a game object in the scene that we want, we should be able to see that this is triggered when we get, when choreographer has a, a event configured in 
the um, choreographer to bolt script. And we'll get to that. In the meantime, now that we have this set up in this flow diagram, the next thing we needed to do was get the animation component, uh, which will look at the game object that this is configured on, this graph is being used on, and return us the animation object if it exists. So we're going to come out of here. We're going to create a new uh, 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 node or unit. We're going to say, OK, uh, let's look for get component. We're going to I'm just going to use this game object to get component one. And on self, it's on the game object, which this is configured on. I'm going to select the animation uh, component. Great. So now out of here, we have this, this output is going to contain the animation component. Um, so what I can do is come off of here and say, okay, we need, again, this is where we need to stop. We have to stop any animations that might be running on that animation component. So I'm going to come in here. Well, that's just the animation thing. I'm going to go into code base, unity engine, uh, animation, if I can get up to it, there it is. And I'm going to stop. There we go. And I'm going to connect those up. Okay, let's come off of here again. And we're going to uh, play, I'm going to go into here, Unity Engine. Uh, we're going to go into animation and we're going to click clip uh, or click the we're going to select play. Uh, and that's it. Uh, we're going to pull this off of here into here and that will tell us, OK, now we have the same uh, component kind of going through and um, playing there. That is that is it. This will now tell it to play the configured animation. So um, by going through and saying, when we get an event, the choreographer event specifically from that script that we specified, um, grab the animation component off of the game object, stop any running animations, and play the configured anima uh, animation. Great. That is, that is it. We're going to save the project. And now what we're going to do is add this and the glue script, the script here, and the flow graph to the game objects that we want to uh, play them on. So, um, okay, great. So we'll go back to our scene. We're going to um, pick one of the pumpkins. Uh, and in this case, we want all those pumpkins to act the same way again. So again, as we did before, we're going to click into the prefab. Uh, and then in here, we're going to add a, we're going to go into bolt, and we're going to add a flow machine that will allow us to come in here, we're going to this musically trigger anims machine, we're going to drop into our macro. Uh, and that will then allow us to receive events and everything. We do also need to add that, that uh, script that we wrote, that custom script. So we'll go into scripts and we'll find this choreographer to bolt uh, uh, script that will take a choreography event and forward it to bolt any machine configured on this game object. Uh, in this case, we can now see this event ID, which is, uh, as we know here, it is a string. But this event ID attribute says, hey, within the Unity editor, I want to treat this as a choreographer event ID. So it looks through the project and says, OK, out of the choreography that are here, what are the options for event IDs? Um, and for this one, we want to go with the bones because this is the, the field pumpkin. Uh, so we just configure it to bones uh, on the choreography editor. That again looks like I'm going to reopen this. These, this is the bones track. The event ID is bones, and the, this is uh, where those events are configured. So we'll go back here into the scene. This is great. That's all set up. Uh, we're going to configure the same thing on this other pumpkin, uh, but we'll, we'll set that event ID to be slightly different. Uh, in this case, we're going to add another bolt uh, flow machine. We're going to use the same macro. 
me grab this thing and put it into uh, that, that graph. And then we're going to add the script that our choreographer to bolt script. We have now put that in there. And this time we're going to use bonks. This is the bonks track that it plays in that, that music. Um, we're going to select the bonks track that looks like this. So they have a different kind of cadence um, along with uh, uh, to play with. Um, great. So now that we have all of these, we have our animation component. We have the flow um, macro that tells it how tells these the you know the, the powers the logic um, behind these animations uh, in terms of triggering it we have our glue code here um, in this case uh, we can then shrink this thing we're going to save the scene we're going to save the project and now we're going to test and see uh, if we get those animations that we expect they're animating just as we, we had hoped. Uh, what's happening here is that as the music plays, these events are getting triggered and they're going through this graph. And as you can see, it's being triggered when the music plays, we're seeing one of these signals go through. Uh, and choreographer is driving these uh, events as well. Uh, everything is working as we expected. We're getting musical animation, uh, but we didn't have the um, sunflowers yet. Let's make that happen. So in order to animate the uh, sunflowers, that's going to be a little bit different because with the pumpkins, we are triggering a specific animation. And with the, um, it's, you know, an animation that the anima the animation itself is separate from the music. In this case, with the, uh, the sunflowers, we're going to use animation data a curve in this case uh, that is stored effectively within the music itself in order to drive the um, the animation of that scaling effect on the sunflowers. Uh, so to do that, we're going to need to take a look at um, how to get the data out out of the choreography data. We have these choreography events; they're spans. They have this curve. So how do we how do we get the the current curve? Uh, number, the curve value uh, at any given time when the music's going. Uh, what that's going to look like is basically we're going to have an event triggered. Um, it'll be forwarded to our graph using the same um, script that we set up before we wrote. And this is one, this one right here. We're going to actually make use of some of the parameters that are sent with that event, the arguments. Uh, and what we'll do is use a special choreographer function in Bolt uh, that will, it's a, it's a unit, uh, and that will allow us to get the value at, uh, of the curve at the current music time. So uh, once we have that value, we will stick it uh, into the local scale for the game object, which will allow us to change its size. So I said we needed to access a choreographer specific function or unit uh, in order to get the value of the curve at a given time. Uh, in order to access that unit, we need to tell Bolt about it. We need to say, hey, Bolt, you need to be aware of these types. So uh, we're going to go up here into the tools menu. We're going to select Bolt and we're going to click the unit options wizard. Uh, we do not need any assemblies, so we're going to click next. We do, however, need to add a type. And in this case, we're going to click the plus button and we're going to come down here and select under Sonic Bloom and Choreo. There's a whole lot of options here and a lot of, some of these are, are you know, payload specific things like payload event extensions, curve payload event extensions, color payload event extensions. In this case, we want the curve payload event extensions. Um, these are special functions that allow you to operate on data of from curve payloads, which is what these are. Uh, now that we've added that, we're going to click generate. We will let it do its work. And now that those are generated, we have everything that we need to build the graph to control uh, these sunflowers. So um, the next step is to create the flow graph. In this case, we're going to create a new bolt flow macro. We're going to call it um, musically scale, whoops, musically scale. 
uh, and we're going to edit the graph. So we have a clean graph here. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is add the custom event trigger again, because we, or well, the custom event. Um, custom event. This is going to, again, have the four uh, arguments. Uh, and once again, it's the same object here. So we're going to use this choreographer event name. We're going to put that in there. Uh, and then, okay, this is important. This is where we're going to start using these arguments. This arg zero is the choreography event, which will contain a payload. Uh, and this arg one is going to be the uh, sample time. So what we're going to do is basically say, give me the payload um, or, well, we're going to say, hey, event, I need to access the curve payload that you have on you. And I'm going to use this sample, give me the value of that curve at this sample time. Uh, and that is what the next unit that we add to this, this graph will do. Uh, we're gonna come out here, we're gonna say, okay, uh, give me uh, the Sonic Bloom Choreo curve payload event extensions, get value of curve at time. This takes a Choreo event and a sample time, which is exactly what we want. Uh, now that we have this unit, uh, we're going to say, okay, this first argument again is the choreography event. We're going to connect it there. The second argument is the sample time. We're just going to connect it in there. Everything is set up. What this gives us as an output is this, this, um, unit will say, okay, the value of that curve, whoops, the value of that curve, say 50% of the way through here is going to be this value zero point. Well, actually it's 1.25. That's what that'll tell us. And as the music plays through, it basically kind of wanders through this curve. And we can always say, hey, at this sample time, what's the value? Uh, and the output is the value from here. So uh, let's go back to our graph. Now that we have this, it's going to be anywhere between 1 and 1 1.5. We need to be able to set that to the scale. Now I will go over here and add a unit and say, OK, uh, local scale. Uh, we're going to have the transform. We're going to set the local scale. So this is eventually where I want to get. So now that we have the local scale unit, we need a vector to pass into it and say, hey, set to set to this. In this case, we want to scale uniformly X, Y, and Z coordinates by the same amount. So what we're going to do is create a new vector three. We're going to add another unit. Uh, we're going to call it new ve vector three. Uh, and we're going to give it this X, Y, Z. Uh, and what I'm going to do is just connect all of these inputs to the same value. They will all now get that same value. I'm going to say, okay, after we come out of this, we're going to set the new vector three to whatever the value of that curve is. It'll let X, Y, and Z will all be the same. After that, we're going to set that, uh, vector three onto the local scale. And that is all we need. This will now take the event, uh, the choreographer event from our glue script. It will use the look for a curve payload, and then it will send the output from that curve payload, create a new vector with it, uh, and set it to the scale. And that's it. Going back to the scene, we have a little bit more work to do now that we have that graph. Um, we need to go into the prefab and add the graph to the prefab. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to add a component. I'm going to add the bolt uh, flow machine. And we're going to take that musically scale flow machine. We're going to add it to the sunflower. All right, great. So that's all configured. The last piece we need is to configure this choreographer to bolt sc uh, script. So we will add that. We're going to go down to our script section, choreographer to bolt. And again, this is, uh, if we look at the choreography editor, this is the organ track because we want these events. We're going to go to the choreo the, uh, the organ track. We're going to go back to our scene here and we're going to select in the drop down organ. Great. That's it. I'm going to save the project, uh, which will save the, um, flow, uh, the macro and it will save the prefab. And then I'm going to go back to the scene just for good measure. I will save the scene and then let's preview it. Let's see. Let's see how that works.
they go. They are now animating along with the music, with that organ sound. And if we look over here, we'll see these are just going because it's constantly sending messages whenever, whenever that organ is in that zone. And now that it's not there and we don't have anything in this part of the track, there's no events. So none of that was going. Uh, it's as easy as that. Uh, now that this is all no longer playing, it's, we're not seeing signals, but that's it. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this video uh, and are able to, it, that it helps you do your own music scaling in your own game. Best of luck. Let us know what you think in the, in the comments uh, and we'll see you next time.